You know, there isn't much better anything in the world than coming home. Folks, I'm Tony Laporta, your host of Road to Indy TV, and I'm standing next to someone who's getting to come home and race in his city streets this weekend, Dalton Kellett from Toronto, Ontario. He's down here on pit lane getting ready for the second Indy Lights race this weekend, and he's getting to do this right in front of his home crowd. All those teal shirts up there at the exit of the uh, last turn here going out on the front straightaway. Dalton, how good does it feel to be back home here in Toronto? Oh, it's awesome. You know, the, the fans here in Toronto are great. Everyone's really engaging, and we have a lot of people out here. Thanks to... Uh, thanks to everybody from AMD and KLI and all friends and family for coming out. No, it's going to be a good day. Racing through the city streets is always fun, but when you get to do it in front of your family and friends, it's even better. What's been the funnest part of the weekend so far, coming back to Toronto and getting to race in front of your friends and family? I think the biggest thing has been you know, the, the new layout. It's really technical. It's challenging. There's a lot of bumps. It's uh, been a big challenge for us to try to figure out what we have to do as, a, as the drivers between you know, our, our, our technique and setup to, to, to try to get to get everything working right. Now the Mazda Road to Indy, it's the only progression and ladder system of its kind. You know there's USF 2000 where you start, you move up to Pro Mazda where you were last year and now here we are in Indy Lights. The step after that is the cars behind us heading back to the garage right now, the Verizon Indy Cars Series. It's got to be a thrill to get to race each weekend all around the country with these guys. We're here at your hometown this one weekend, so are you going to let any of your buddies or any of your family jump in the race car and take a few laps since we're here with them this weekend? <laughs> oh. We'll have to see. I, you know, there's a whole lot. Of, there's a whole lot of action here on track today. So I don't know how kindly the promoters would would take to us just doing hot laps, but maybe we'll be able to figure something out. You know, there's a lot of teal shirts up there. Your fans, your friends, your family. I say, you know, you bring this car home in one piece. You let them jump in the car. They're up there and they're getting excited. Let's hear some noise for a hometown kid, ladies and gentlemen, Dalton Kellett. He's going to be rolling off towards the back of the grid in this one, but do not expect him to stay there long. Driving for Andretti Autosport, Dalton Kellett. He's going to roll off P14. Dalton, best of luck. And uh, any last words for the friends and family up there in turn 11? Watch for the K-line number 28 to be climbing through the, through the field. All right, Dalton Kellett starting in 14th, but he's not going to stay there for long. And Toronto's very own Indy Lights driver, Dalton Kellett. We're getting ready for our last Mazda Road Indy race of the weekend. It's Indy Lights taking to the streets of Toronto up next. Jake, let's have a good one. Going to be a lot of fun, uh, not only here for this Indy Lights race, but later this afternoon for the uh, Honda Indy Toronto, a tradition 30 years in the making, open wheel racing here on the streets of Toronto. Field is lined up in those uh, seven rows of two. They'll see the green flag and accelerate. It's Felix Rosenquist, the pole sitter, who gets a nice jump. They'll go side by side for second. Now they'll look to go three wide. Felix Sorales grabs that second spot. Andre Negrau hammers the throttle to the outside. He'll slip into third, and it looks like Santi Urrutia will be kicked back to fourth. Leaders out of turn number two, Jake Query, single file, separating themselves very nicely. The water of Lake Ontario behind me is very still at the moment. The action in front of me is anything but. Santi Urrutia locks up his brakes. He's going to lose a spot to the form of Kyle Kaiser. Felix Zorales, side by side, contact out of turn four, Rob. More side by side, Jake, as Kaiser going to the inside of Zorales. Kaiser up over top of the curbing on the inside of the corner. Pedro Hita gets caught up as well. So Pedro Hita drops a couple spots. Nick Yeoman, Garrett Christ able to go by his team, Pelfrey teammate. Yeah, Pedro Hita got passed by two or three cars as he got into the rear tire of Ed Jones. The field goes single file now, though. Uh, Rosenquist, again, the leader. He streaks out of that turn eight uh, section, and he's got a nice advantage over the rest of the field. And uh, Davey, we get a chance to see the replay here as they make their way through turn number three. Things get always so tight, uh, especially on the opening laps. Well, oh, yeah, there was definitely some contact there and that is the tightest section of the course and the best passing zone going down in turn three but then after that as, as the course description said it gets tight to turns four five and six fast corner through that turn six but it didn't seem to do any damage to those cars. I mean, guys did give a little bit, but there definitely was some slight rubbing and contact. Jake Query, one lap in the books, and just like yesterday, Felix Rosenquist with a monster lead into turn three. Sizable gap back, and then you wait a while before Negrau comes into view. Sorales in third, Kaiser running in fourth. Zach Beach tried to take a look to Yerutia, couldn't make the pass that allowed Dean Stoneman passed him as well. I'll tell you, Jake Query, Rosenquist almost to the corner of the apex of turn five before he even saw the next driver come out of turn number four. His proficiency on cold tires definitely on display here. Rosenquist again out to a solid lead on the opening laps. RC Enerson about two or three, uh, actually got one car slowing. That appears to be the number two of Juan Pedro Hita. I was just going to make the comment that those, those Team Pelfrey cars were looking awful racy, but looks like we've got problems uh, for the number two 
uh, of Juan Pedro Hita. In fact, he's going to come to a stop right there in the middle of the course. That, that definitely could bring a yellow out there. Um, I can't tell where on the course he is. Looks like back in the 6-7 area, but it, it's not from contact. It just looks like an engine issue, possibly. Let's get a couple updates in the pits. First with Jim Murphy. It is a ca car of Zach Clement DeMillo, oh. who is in for a front wing change. They're quickly going ahead, and they're going to make a right front tire change as well for him. Probably a little bit of contact out there on these early laps. Further down pit lane to Paul Small. Zach Veach has lost a couple of spots here since the drop of the green flag, and the crew is definitely concerned. They got boxed out most recently. They're going down into turn three in that battle with the Ruchia. They're hoping that car is in one piece and there was no contact. Jake, Jake, we got a car in the tires in turn three. Shelby Blackstock, he missed the turn and then lost power. Tried to refire that 51 machine, now has it back underway. But Shelby Blackstock is going to have a long time coming before he can catch back up to the back of the field. RC, kind of a bizarre start to this race. Uh, we, we thought the full course yellow might come out for Juan Pedro Hita, but apparently he got that car refired. Yeah, it looked like he just had to recycle the power. It must have been some electrical or, or a power issue, but uh, you recycle the power, it completely resets the car, and that usually helps it fire back up again. But yeah, there's cars everywhere right now, I all gonna, going off in the runoffs and everything. I was going to say, that has spaced the field out quite a bit here. This is a 45-lap race, or one hour, whatever comes first. Uh, for Felix Rosenquist, though, he has led them all so far as he leads his way down the back straightaway. Jake, he'll come into your view. Andre Negrau has that second spot, but he's being chased down by Felix Sorales. Front three into turn number three. Big group of cars behind Negrau. As a matter of fact, Sorales locked him up. Kaiser got past him. So too, Urrutia and Jones. And Felix Sorales has to go into the runoff area. The entire field here, except for those two back markers, big are going to work their way past. Sorry, Jake Weary. Big changes, as you said. Kaiser are able to hold this position in front of Santia Rutia, the driver Sorales, who looked to have the momentum here in the series coming off that win in Iowa, continuing here through turn number five, guys, but he has a flat left rear, Nick Yeoman, flat left for Sorales. And Davey RC, I mean, Davey, ton of tire smoke as, as uh, Sorales was trying to make his way into turn number three. Yeah, what happens when the tire goes down, obviously your right front tire comes up in the air, and, and it's so easy to lock the tires up. You just don't have any braking power. Um, he, he's going to make it to the pits, but he needs to be careful because that tire is about to come apart. You're better off to go a little bit slower. Don't let the tire come apart because if it does, it could definitely tear up some bodywork. And I think it's taking off one of the struts to the underwing now, but it doesn't look too bad. Like he, he, there's a chance he get going again. And more than likely, those early laps, he probably got a nose wing or somebody touched that left rear just a little bit to uh, to cut it down. It was a great pass by Kyle Kaiser, who put the pressure on one of our championship contenders in, uh, in, in number four, uh, Felix Sorales. So Sorales will go to pit lane and try to change that rear tire. Rob Howden, good battle for third. Kaiser's got his hands full. Nick just rolled through me here right now. Kyle Kaiser having to hold off Santi Arrutia. Arrutia last year's Pro Mazda champion. But Kaiser, I spoke to him yesterday after the race, and he just feels like he has a more maturity, more confidence than he had last year when he got together with Nelson BK at the end of the back straightaway. Kaiser, of course, winning at Phoenix this year. Tons of confidence coming into this event. So uh, of the 13 cars that started this race, uh, quite a few of them have already had problems. Zachary Clayman demello has been to pit lane. Felix Sorales has been to pit lane. Juan Pedro Hita has as well. Shelby Blackstock has been into the runoff area. And Dean Stoneman, one of the championship contenders, has not turned a lap. He did not answer the bell or see the green flag. So we will try to get an update on why that number 27 of Dean Stoneman, who uh, came into this weekend as the driver's second in points, was not able to answer the bell and will uh, end up with a 14th place finish and take a big hit in the championship line. Here's how they run here with five laps in the books and 40 to go. Felix Rosenquist is your leader. Andre Negrau runs second. Kyle Kaiser is third. Best battle on the track is probably for fourth, excuse me, fourth third. Ky Kaiser has it. Santi Urrutia currently runs in fourth, trying to track him down. Points leader Ed Jones runs in fifth. Zach Veach has stayed out of trouble here early on. He runs in the sixth position. Garrett Grist is seventh. Dalton Kellett is eighth. Neil Albarico ninth. Shelby Blackstock is tenth. Juan Pedrojita is eleventh. Felix Sorales, the last car on the lead lap, he's in twelfth. And Zachary Clayman DeMello, who has made a trip to pit lane, is one lap down in thirteenth. Jake Query, you're watching the action here in turn number three.
you know, we talk a lot about tire degradation or the lack thereof here with these Cooper tires in this series. It is not something oftentimes that these drivers worry about, except for in longer races or, of course, in extreme conditions. This rubber does a really good job for them. But what's interesting to watch here in turn number three, Nick, and you've seen it here in the past, this is such a heartbreaking area because you have so much speed built up, but it is such a close right-hander, and you don't want to have too much speed on that concrete patch that is right there at the apex of the turn. As a result, if they come in too late, you can see these tires locking up. That's what we saw with Felix Sorales that led to a problem that ultimately led to that tire going down. Down to pit road and Jim Murphy. I'm here with Michael Andretti, who owns four cars in this field, but only three of them answered the bell. Dean Stoneman didn't come out. Michael, what was the story behind that? Uh, we only had three cars in the race, but, uh, you know, um, I don't know, there's something with the, wrong with the engine. It's got a big fuel leak, and uh, we don't know what it is yet. We're trying to fix it to try to still get out there and see if we can get quickest lap in a race or something like that. All right, thank you very much, Michael. Clearly very disappointed and frustrated by that. Appreciate that update, uh, Jim Murphy. RC, that's a, that's a big hit for a championship contender not even get to see the green flag. Yeah, I mean, it's it's terrible when you don't get out there because of mechanical stuff. It's nothing the driver can do about it, and it's just kind of – it impacts the whole team, and it just brings the whole vibe back, and it's hard to bring that back. And, Davey, for, for Stoneman, I mean, uh, we're getting to the point of the season, which is five, la five races to go. He's in the midst of a championship hunt. Uh, I mean, if he does is able to get back onto the racetrack, as, as Michael talked about, to go for the fastest lap, but, boy, that sure doesn't help you points-wise. Yeah, you know, you got to do all you can, and he, I, we just talked. I mean, R.C. said it. I mean, when you're sitting there, you have no chance. I mean, it's not your fault. There's a fuel leak. It's frustrating for the team. I'm sure Michael's frustrated, obviously, Stoneman, but, man, what a hit in the championship, and I, you just can't recover from mistakes like that. Now, you know, we were talking about the Andretti Autosport team such supporters of the road to Indy and then to get to the IndyCar Series. But they've been struggling a bit in the past. I mean, all year long sure. in the IndyCar, they've really been struggling until they get to Indianapolis and they pretty much dominate the place at that point. But then you look at this, and right now, they're sitting uh, 8th, 10th, and 14th. I mean, just not the run that that Andretti Autosports we're used to seeing. Right now, the, the, the tough teams are the Blardies, Schmitz, and, and Colin right now. Yeah, it certainly is. Andretti Autosports struggles. Right now it is Bellardi Auto Racing who is shining. Rosenquist's lead over second place running Andre Negrau is 3.6 seconds. But Jake, that battle for third may quickly become a battle for second. Three cars making their way into turn number three. You know, it's fun to watch this battle for third as Negrau locks him up a little bit at second. Then you've got Kaiser Yerutia's right there. Rob, reality is Ed Jones is starting to skulk in on that battle for the third spot. Right now, watching Kyle Kaiser, uh, Jay, continue to inch closer uh, to the second place running Andre Negrau. He's done a great job uh, working his way forward for Santi Arrutia right there. Ed Jones still quite a ways back, but again, Jones with the point leader really benefiting right now because his primary contenders have had issues, both Felix Sorales and Dean Stoneman with those issues on the racetrack. Ed Jones, not the speed we normally see out of the young driver, but he's getting very lucky here as other drivers have a bit of bad luck. RC, that third place running uh, driver of Kyle Kaiser had a really nice race yesterday coming through the field made the move on Zach Beach to get that final step on the podium. Looks like he's uh, right there in position to have another solid day. Yeah, I mean, they had quick cars. I mean, his teammate won the championship last year. They always had quick cars, and, uh, and it's showing right now. I mean, they're, he's fast. He's one of the fastest cars on the track, and it looks like he's he's definitely got a quick car, especially in traffic. Kaiser is a, is a driver like you, spent last year as a rookie campaign learning about the Indy Lights. How beneficial did you find being back in a car uh, for a second year of Indy Lights? Oh yeah, the second year coming back, it gives you more confidence than ever. You've been at a, almost every track except they added Phoenix in there and uh, the, they'll be adding the Glen in here. So uh, it, it's, a, it's, it's definitely a good thing to come back for a second year, but it's it's, sh it's showing now that he needs to he needs to pick up some pace and pick up some points right now because uh, championship contenders are falling back. Yeah, certainly a great opportunity with uh, problems for Stoneman, uh, an opportunity for some of these drivers. And, of course, Rosenquist, who has missed a couple races for uh, sports car commitments, is not a driver that is really in the championship hunt. And the growl isn't either. So right now for Kyle Kaiser, one of those six drivers that came into this weekend separated by just 47 points, he's the highest running of those six. So it could be a very big day for him. Santi Arutia stalking him into turn number one. It's a battle for third. Uh, those three drivers all separated by 1.2 seconds. They'll roar out of turn number two. Jay Query and head down the back straightaway. Uh, Santi Arutia starting to look racy there in fourth. Kaiser, as a matter of fact, goes all the way to the bottom of the racetrack. Arutia now going to swing out wide. 
Sata Yurutia, Kaiser side by side. Yurutia couldn't make the pass as they move into turn number four. Uh, Jay Quera, he's looking on him right now again up here to turn number five as they roll over this concrete section. They got to get the card back to the asphalt before they roll back on power. And you're right, Sata Yurutia. You know they're on the radio telling him that Ed Jones is behind him. You got to push, push, push. If he wants to get back in the championship, he's got to have a finish ahead of Ed Jones. RC Anderson, we saw Sata Yurutia swing way wide there into turn number three. Just how much does it funnel down when you've got to crank that steering wheel hard to the right there. Oh man, the visuals that you have coming in there, especially with the depth perception coming in that quick on that heavy of a brake zone, it looks really wide. And then as soon as you start to get down to the corner, if you're running side by side, it funnels in real close. And it almost gives you like a tunnel vision. You just look at it and it just gets smaller and smaller. And then you know that you realize way too late that you're not gonna make the corner. And it was at that where he almost went in the tire barrier because it got down to almost turn in and then you realize, oh man, I'm not gonna make the corner. And Davey, the difficult part is once you clear that, that right hander of turn number three, then you're racing back uphill into the left through four. Well, that's a, that's the key, right? You can get side by side through turn three. We've seen it before, but then what happens, it gets so tight turn four for that left hander and you're, you're trying to get back on the throttle and uh, it, it's a challenging corner right there. The best braking zone for sure, the best passing zone for sure. But once you get through turn three or get to turn three, you know, the game's on. It's, it's difficult to get through there. And uh, the, the, the attempt that Yurutia made to the outside of Kaiser cost him a ton of momentum. It's going to take him a couple laps uh, to regain that momentum and uh, drive his way back up for a chance to get around uh, Kaiser for that final step on the podium. We documented some of the problems uh, that Felix Sorales had with a flat right rear. Let's go to pit lane. I know one of our guys has an eye. It appears, gentlemen, that uh, Felix Sorales back on pit lane. Jim Murphy, were you there? I'm actually back here in the uh, paddock area looking at Dean Stoneman. They are furiously working now, right now on spark plugs. They've made an attempt to fire this engine. Dean is in the car. He's helmeted up. He is ready to go. The entire crew is ready to tow him to pit lane as soon as they can get this fixed. And let me tell you what, it is all action down here in the paddock trying to get him out there, as Michael said. Let's check in now with Paul Small. And uh, Felix Sorales just rolling out of his pit stall here. Second flat tire. This time it was the left rear Cooper that they needed to change to send him back out. Davey, getting a uh, view that Jim Murphy was talking about, all the work being done for Dean Stoneman. He is now officially 12 laps down, though. Sitting in that race car, that's a hopeless feeling. Oh, boy. I mean, you see all the mechanics and engineers, they have the, the, the engine counting off. They're looking everywhere they can. And uh, what, a, what a bummer for that team because, like I say, a championship contender just uh, may, may have lost all hopes to win that championship right here. Rob Howden, uh, that driver, Dean Stoneman, the only uh, bullet in the chamber for Andretti Autosport and their hopes to win another Indy Lights championship. You know, Nick, I think Michael Andretti said it straight out there. All they want to do is get him on the racetrack to see if he cannot turn the fast lap. Of course, one bonus point goes to the driver who turns the fast lap of the race, and you only have to rewind to a couple years ago when Gabby Chavez and Jack Harvey ended the season off tied in points. They ended up having to go past wins. They both had the same amount of wins. They had to go to second place finishes to see that Gabby Chavez was going to to win the championship, of course, the scholarship to move into the Verizon IndyCar Series. Sometimes it comes down just for the one point, and if Stoneman can get out there, turn a fast lap and grab that bonus point, it may make a difference when we get to Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca in September. Of course, uh, always a lot of great championship battles, not just in the Verizon IndyCar Series, but in the Indy Light Series presented by Cooper Tires as well. And, and RC, as this Indy Lights field continues to grow, I mean, a couple of years ago, we saw fields of eight, nine, 10 cars. This year, we've had fields of 15, 16 cars, 14 this weekend at Toronto. Uh, those weekends where you do have bad luck, it appears that with a larger field, boy, it hurts you even more in points. Yeah, I mean, I see how, like, you get first place, you get 30 points, and you, you, you if you don't even finish the race, you get 14th, you're still getting, like, around 10 points, I think it is, or it's a little less than 10 points, so it's ultimately not that big of a penalty, but it's still, every point counts. I mean, you come down to the championship battle in the last race, and it's within a few points, every point's going to count, and so that's what they're going for here. 14 laps in the books. It's still Felix Rosenquist, your leader, 3.5 seconds. Last time across the line, Andre Negrau has that second spot uh, pretty well in tow. In fact, he's done a nice job of stretching out that gap back to third place running Kyle Kaiser at 1.1 seconds. Uh, then you've got another 1.4 seconds back to fourth place running Santi Arrutia. The points leader, Ed Jones, runs in the fifth position. Jake Query, pair of cars headed your way. Uh, Zach Beach and Garrett Griss battling for sixth and seventh. Both of them just went through here in turn number three. One of the things I think is interesting, Rob, let's talk about Dean Stoneman. You touched on it, but it's an excellent point. You're sitting on pit road. You're trying to get out there. You have points to consider. But then when you think about the fact that Beach right now finds himself outside 
of the top five. You have Felix Rosenquist, who didn't run last weekend, who may sweep this weekend, but still missed out on valuable points a week ago. You have Ed Jones, the point leader, who finds himself out of the podium right now. Reality is, Rob, that for Dean Stoneman, if he can get back out there and just start getting laps, there's an opportunity he could make up just one, two, a handful of points that could become so critical at the end of the year. You know, Jake, it's not as bad as we think. You're exactly right with Rosenquist leading. As you said, he did not uh, run at Iowa. He did not run at Road America either. They had uh, uh, French in the car at uh, Road America. So again, here we go with a situation where even though it could be dire straits for Dean Stoneman not even able to get onto the racetrack yet because his primary challenges are having issues, all he's got to do is get out here and claw back that one point, and he may be able to limit the damage here Toronto. Davey, we're watching this battle right now for uh, the sixth position between Zach Beach and Garrett Grist. And uh, young Garrett Grist and that Team Pelfrey, <laughs> that bright yellow car, using up every inch of the race. I track. love it. He Down there in turn two, he got up, uh, off of turn one in between one and two. He got so wide, he brushed the wall a little bit. No damage, took a little, little paint off the wall and uh, a little white wall of the tire. But he is putting some pressure on Zach right now. Kids showing the talent that he has. And and he's hungry for to try to get that sixth spot. And one thing we keep continue talking about the points championship as well, Nick. Right now with Stoneman, if that one point he went from second to fifth in the points right now, and he's 37 points back. But if he can get that fast lap, if it's possible he gets that one point, that ties him for fourth. That it's a point at a time that make a difference. But but just to show you what's happening, he's dropped three spots in the championship already today. And uh, if he's going to gain any points in terms of moving up positions, he's going to need some attrition to take place in this race. And so far, just hasn't had it happen as uh, we've got all, 12 of the 13 cars that are running are on the lead lap. Felix Sorales has been to pit lane twice to, to repair a flat tire. And thus, uh, in the point standings you talked about, Davey, Sorales, as they run right now, would be fourth in points. It would be uh, Jones, your points leader. Yerutia would be 24 markers back in second. Then just a total log jam third, fourth, fifth, and then even back to sixth, uh, it's Zach Beach, all within about 12 points. Let's go to pit lane and Paul Small. Well, the Schmidt Peterson Motorsports driver is having a very good day, especially in the growl, because yesterday he wound up on pit road a couple of times, did not have a good finish. Yesterday, Santi Arrutia was as high as third place, but then that car tended to fade in the second half of the race. Today is a little bit warmer than it was for the Indy Lights race that we had yesterday, so we'll have to keep our eyes on Arrutia, see if they got the setup of that car good for the second half of the race, or if he's going to be struggling to hold on to a top five. RC, uh, Andre Negrau with a good second place run going. That was a teammate of yours for that first half of the season. Uh, your thoughts on that young gentleman? Is another guy that we're, we're all getting to know here in the Indy Lights series? Yeah, I mean, him and Santi, I mean, they're both really quick guys, and we just we just needed the correct car, the correct setup that fit all of us. We all like different stuff, so it was, we were, we were he's a quick driver, and it's, I'm, I'm excited to see him up front. That battle for uh, the sixth position is on once again. Rob Howden, Zach Beach trying to hold on to it. Yeah, you know what, uh, Nick, I'll tell you, Garrett Gris has closed right up on Beach now. Less than a car length away, and they come in at turn five, and of course, Gris all over on the throttle, but I, I talked to uh, Garrett before the start of the race. Of course, he was racing nose to tail with Ed Jones yesterday, and Garrett knows full well he's not in a championship chase. He wasn't going to try anything too crazy on Ed Jones, and I wouldn't expect he's going to try anything too crazy here on Zach Beach either. This is about a preview for next year. He's here trying to get some experience. He does not want to knock the car up. The concept of them is to come back and run the entire 2017 Indy Lights program. This is all about experience. Garrett Grist winning here last year in Pro Mazda and the uh, results of the performance he's put in here so far, I'm sure he's impressing a lot of people. I think he's probably impressing the hometown fans as well as those two drivers race out of turn number two. Jake Query, uh, that battle for second. Andre Negrau's car stepped out a bit there in turn three. I'll tell you what, he did the same thing our leader, Felix Rosenquist, had done last time by. Rosenquist hasn't made a lot of mistakes, Nick, but he did get a little bit loose as well out of turn number three. Watching some good battles, second through fourth, all separated by just a couple seconds. Negrau Kaiser and then Santi Arrutia. And then uh, again, as we've talked about, Garrett Grist really hounding Zach Beach for the sixth place position. Nobody has had anything so far for Felix Rosenquist, who is a full five seconds ahead uh, as he's on the front straightaway already. Second, third, and fourth will make their way out of the front straightaway now. Here comes that 17 of Andre Negrau. He's the driver for Schmidt-Peterson Racing. Kyle Kaiser about three to four car lengths back. 
and another six to seven car lengths back to Santi Arutia. They'll race out of turn number two. Negrau has that second spot. Kaiser's been all over that rear wing for about the last five or six laps. They'll race out of the bridge, make the kink down the back straightaway. Second, third, and fourth headed your way, Jake Query. Rosenquist already into three, if that gives you an idea of his lead. Then you've got Negrau. Kaiser's been stalking him. The gap about two car lengths, then about a car length and a half back to Santi Arutia. Looks to be like Negrau's been able to stretch a little bit in that last lap is it probably five or six lengths now for Negrau over top of Kaiser, but funny to watch uh, Felix Sorales out there all by himself on the racetrack, Nick Yoma, but he is on the throttle. He has the thing tail happy coming out of turn number five. He's trying to put down a fast lap as well. We talked about Dean Stoneman wanting to try to get that bonus point for the fastest lap. I guarantee you that's what Felix Sorales is thinking about here as well. And Davey, you talked about the open of the show about how fast Sorales was yesterday driving up through the field. A uh, little red mist in those eyes to, to have the issue with two flat tires and have an opportunity to win this race thrown away. Yeah, no no question about it. And he'd ha right now, he's not the top five of fastest laps right now. So actually, uh, I think it's Kai is it Kaiser the fastest lap. No, it's changed right now to, uh, who is that? The Shrek car, no, that's uh, the... Number 17. Negrau. Negrau, oh, Negrau that's Negrau, right. Yeah. Negrau, that's right. And the Schmidt car right now is the f just turned the fastest lap at a 106.6. So uh, Andre Negrau, that second place running car, he has the fastest lap. And as uh, Rob Howden talked about, uh, one valuable point on the line. For Felix Rosenquist, uh, deja vu here with 20 laps in the books. 25 to go. His lead is at 4.942 seconds. And uh, RC, this is a guy that, that, listen, he came over from the European ladder system to join that team for Brian Bellardi's uh, organization. And, and you saw it firsthand. We all saw it at St. Petersburg right at the start of the season. He's a tough, tough race car driver to beat. Yeah, I mean, he comes from a bunch of European racing. He's got so much experience. He's 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 won Macau twice, I, or I think it's twice. It might even be three times. I mean, you don't, you're not slow if you do that. <laughs> and it, it's just showing right now he's bringing Bellardi a couple wins. And uh, I mean, he missed a few races, so it kind of takes him out of the championship. But um, if he keeps winning like this, it might put him back in it. And Davey, he's going to get an opportunity uh, to test a car for Chip Ganassi's organization at Mid Ohio here in a week. If Chip Ganassi likes you, then uh, I think there's something yeah. to be said about well, talent. Well, you know, Chip, he has an eye for talent. There's no question about it. Doesn't matter if it's on this side or his NASCAR side or sports car. He has an eye for talent, without a doubt. You know, and one one thing when when you hear an interview from him or you just talk to him. You could feel the confidence in the guy. You could feel the experience, the confidence, and and just that that he knows what he's doing on and off the track. So, um, I, you know, talented guy right now, and Bellardi's fortunate enough to have him in his car. Felix Sorales just threw down the fastest lap of the race so far. He again is running in the 13th position. Felix Rosenquist, your leader. Andre Negrau runs second. Kyle Kaiser is third. Uh, Santi Arruti has closed that gap after a failed attempt. In turn number three, he is now back onto the rear wing of that blue and white number 18 of Kyle Kaiser. That's a battle for third. Yerutia runs fourth. Ed Jones runs fifth. Zach Beach is sixth. Garrett is seventh. Dalton Kellett runs in the eighth position. Neil Alberico is ninth. Shelby Blackstock, tenth. Juan Pedro Hito runs 11th. Zachary Clayman de Mello is 12th. Felix Sorales two laps down in 13th. And Dean Stoneman still has yet to turn a lap with those mechanical issues. Uh, Jake Query, I talked about Felix, or excuse me, Santi Urrutia. He's closing right back up on Kyle Kaiser. Once again, going to try to swing it to the outside. Had to lock up the brakes as Kaiser hugs the inside on that concrete patch. Again, Kaiser holding off Santi Urrutia. Arutia sideways coming out of turn number four. Jake right on the throttle trying to come through there. And how different things are a couple laps down the road. Of course, Kaiser was putting a ton of pressure on Negrau for second, but he has fallen back. As you guys said, Negrau turned in some good laps. He stretched away from Kaiser. The Yunkos racing injury. Now it's Santi Arutia looking hard to fight his way. Nick Yeoman onto the podium here in Indy Lights. Uh, through 22 laps in the books, 23 to go. RC, you've got a lot of experience on these Cooper tires. It's a great partnership uh, with the Indy Light Series. Uh, and certainly, we they've been very reliable throughout the years. This race, though, ten laps longer than what we saw yesterday. What do you think that'll how that'll factor in uh, here as we close in, uh, which is 22 to go? Yeah, I mean the longer race is always more difficult. I mean we're running 45 laps on one set of tires, where it's that's, that's 100 miles on a set of tires, which is pretty tough to run on. I mean, I think Felix has learned from yesterday when he pulled out a eight second gap and then a full course yellow came out. I think he's just maintaining that gap and just saving his tires just in case the yellow comes out. And then I bet you'll see at the end where he's gonna try and turn some quick laps. David, we've seen a lot of drivers uh, lock them up into turn number one. Sometimes they're locking them up into turn number three. 
you lock them up too much, I know you can flat spot the tires. How, how difficult is it to drive a car once you've worn out those tires from locking them up, getting into corners? Well, one, one thing that can happen, there's three areas on this track that you can lock them up, and that's going into one, three, as you said, and then turn eight because of the bumps. And um, it can, you know, if you flat spot a tire, they're out of, out of balance. and just start the car start shaking and vibrating a little bit. Doesn't mean you can't still go race. It's just as not as comfortable as a, a nice, smooth race car, I should say. Across the line for Felix uh, Rosenquist. 21 laps to go, and that lead uh, now at the line is at 6.1 seconds. Back to Andre Negrau. Four different uh, teams represented in the top five. You've got Velarde Auto Racing, who's got the car in the lead. You've got uh, Schmidt Peterson represented in second, fourth. Negrau and Santi Arutia. Kyle Kaiser for New Coast Racing runs in third. Ed Jones runs in fifth. David, we see a trio of cars coming off of that final corner. That car in the middle is Zachary Clement DeMello. He's a couple laps down, but boy, he's uh, really working over Neil Alberico, who runs in ninth. He has some speed right there, right? Some of these guys are hoping for a yellow to come out because it seems like at the end of the race, they still have some speed. Although, Felix, if you look at the, the last lap, he, he leads most laps. He has a fast lap of the race now. He has a fast lap his last time by. So he's leading this race, has speed. But you know these guys would just love to have a chance to get them nose and tail. Ooh, we see some action on that back straightaway right now. And I think that is, wow, they're everywhere going into turn three. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's Sorales, guys. And it's claiming just in front of him. He tried to go ahead and make that move, did Sorales. I think he's trying to get that hot lap. And then those slower cars in front of him, he locked them up, wisely got back, and let both of them go in front. You know, Jake, I think this is more of a matter of pride for these guys here. A couple of laps down, both Sorales and, of course, Clayman DeMello as well. They know they have the speed. They don't want to sit back there right now. And I'll tell you, they're both going to be trying to get by Alba Rico because they want to see if they can't work their way forward right now. But, RC, those two guys, they've got fast race cars, but they're both a couple laps down. For Neil Alberico, he's got to be thinking, I understand you guys are faster, but I'm on the lead lap and battling uh, for a top ten. Yeah, I mean, it all comes down to uh, what, what, what exactly your goal is. I mean, Sorales is more than one lap down. I think you think he's two laps. So is, Correct, so is DeMello. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're so far out of it. There's no way they're going to make up those two laps. If they're going for a quick lap, I'd say they just need to drop back and find a gap and go for their fast laps. And honestly, they could use this as a test session, if anything. And uh, actually, I think they might be battling for position, though. It looks so, so none of them are going to back off, and they're going to try and go as fast as they can past this guy. It looks like Zachary Clayman DeMello has slipped around Neil Alberico as they make their way through turn number three. Four-car train headed your way, Rob Howden. Working here into turn number five, as you said, and indeed. It is Clayman DeMello by Alberico. Now the two Carlin drivers, of course, uh, Sorrell is a teammate for Alberico. He's right on the rear wing. And again, Dalton Kelly will be the next one for Clayman DeMello will try to get up to. But as R.C. Ederson said, they're in the middle of their own battle for the top 10 position. Of course, the driver's a couple laps down. He's settled down. Hopefully, we won't see any kind of incident on the racetrack. Sorrell is trying to work uh, all over the rear wing of his teammate in Alberico to the turns. 9, 10, and 11 section of this racetrack. Alberico also in a battle for that eighth position with Dalton Kellett, who kind of leads that four-car train. 19 laps to go, though, for our leader, Felix Rosenquist. 6.7 seconds. Davey, it just continues to build <laughs> lap after lap for Rosenquist. Well, the, he, has, he has checked out. There's no question about it. But the great thing is second, third, and fourth, they're all within a couple seconds of each other. There, there's a nice race going on there. And then you got Jones pretty much by himself, but then you got Veach, Gr uh, Grist, Kellett. Them guys are, you know, they're close enough to put some, a, a good show on for the fans. Sorales is on the front straightaway. In fact, you can't even see uh, the second place running a car of Andre Negrau behind him. He's a 7.2 seconds now as he makes his way through turn number one, through turn number two. This is when those drivers jump on that accelerator and really start to uh, roar those injuries. They climb through the RPMs, down the back straightaway, and uh, reaching the max speed, at least as fast as you're going to go uh, here on the streets of Toronto. Jake Quarry, though, that battle for second, about a half a second uh, separating Andre Negrau and Kyle Kaiser. Pretty fractured field at this point, but yes, indeed, that battle that has never gone away is that of Andre Negrau, about a car and a half length or so in front of that second place machine, or third place machine, rather, of Kyle Kaiser, who still can't get around him. Yeah, you know, Jake Query, Kaiser, remember, just a couple laps ago, was actually in the clutches of Santia Ruti. He's been able to get rid of the driver of the Uruguay and is now closing back up on the growl again. So Kaiser, maybe just cooling those Cooper tires off a little bit, going back to work, trying to see if he can't take over P2. 
how much can you work with those tires, RC, throughout the course of the race? I mean, it's natural on a street course when you're pushing hard. You're going to lock them up. That's going to happen from time to time. Can you cool those tires and get them to come back to you throughout the course of an event? Yeah, I mean, you can You can always cool the tires by just slowing up a little bit, not working the tires as much in the corners, braking a little bit later, trying not – like, you can do a lot of different things with your driving style. But, I mean, if you don't want to lose pace and you want to stay with that group and you've got to capitalize, you got to use your tires where you think you can use them best. I mean, if you're in a group like that, like Santi's at, I would be pushing as hard as I can to try to get ahead while you have good tires. And then tr once you're ahead of the train like Andre is, you can kind of lay back. I mean, it's hard to pass here, so you can just kind of lay back and kind of stack them up in the right spot, and you can save your tires. Yurutia in fourth, trying to force Kyle Kaiser into a mistake to grab that third position. Kaiser at the same time, kind of the meat in that sandwich, trying to work over Andre Negrau, but nobody right now has anything for Felix Rosenquist. Uh, Jim Murphy, 7.3 seconds, that driver for Bellardi Auto Racing. Smooth sailing here with 17 to go. A lot of smiles here on the face of Brian Bellardi. You seem to be uh, pretty confident with that driver up front there with Felix's day. Yeah, Felix is, a, I mean, he's a wonderful talent. He's driving a heck of a race. I mean, he's, um, he's dominant on street courses as we've seen this weekend. So we're uh, hoping it just settles in here and he maintains. How about the weekend for Zach? A little bit more of a challenge. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Zach was uh, running second yesterday, dropped back to fourth, and then two corners to go, unfortunately, put it into the wall. Um, you know, I was disappointed that was big on the points, but uh, he's fighting back. He's a fighter. Well, he'll be okay. They're looking for the double from Felix today. That's Brian Bellardi. And Brian Bellardi's got a good race car. That battle for third is uh, continuing to rage on. Urrutia will try to jump to the outside to crossover move. Rob Howden, uh, he is working over Kyle Kaiser there to turn five. And again, we just go back and forth. One lap, Kaiser's been putting the pressure on the ground. Now we've got the number 55, uh, Arutia back in going for uh, for third position. Exciting to see what these drivers are doing, but Kaiser kind of just flip-flopping back and forth. But just a lap ago, when we had a chance to talk to Brian Bellardi, I was watching uh, down here, Zach Clayman, DeMello, and uh, Felix Sorrells battling out here in turn five. Guys, they went side by side through turn number five. Both drivers more than one lap down. Of, I talked about it being a matter of pride. Well, I'll tell you, Clayman DeMello almost put Sorrells on the wall in the exit of turn number five. Sorrells had to get it way out of the throttle, not to tag the wall. And I guarantee you, this battle is not done. Even though it's really not for position, this battle is nowhere near done. Both of these drivers want to beat each other. Battles throughout the field. Up front with 15 to go, though, Jake Query. Felix Rosenquist has the lead. Just how smooth does that Bellardi Mazda look in front of you? Very, very. As a matter of fact, he works his way now. He starts kind of a high line into turn number three, but just very smoothly cuts off that corner. And then you wait quite a while before Negrau comes into view. Then that battle for third, which is really heating up. Yorutia is trying every which way but loose, but still Rob can't get around Kyle Kaiser. Jake Query, he's trying to put the car in the mirrors of Kyle Kaiser. Made a move to the inside, coming to five. Of course, not going to make a pass there, but he wants to make sure he's filling those mirrors of Kaiser. They work their way to turn number six. And of course, Yorutia right there with him. With 15 to go, RC, I get the sense. Santi Yorutia, he's a very aggressive driver very fast and talented driver at that too though probably tired of waiting uh, to get around Kyle Kaiser for that final spot yeah I mean I went once you're sitting back there for long enough it's gotten to the point where you're like okay I need to use everything I got and I mean he's using up those Cooper tires as much as he can they hold up well and he's 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 going for position right now he open, hoping he can get up with his teammate further back those lap cars have been slugging it out Felix Sorales slipped around Zachary claiming DeMello is they continue to kind of battle for the fastest lap. Meanwhile, that battle for third out of turn at number two, Kyle Kaiser. Looks like that car roars off of turn number two pretty close, Jake Query. Last couple laps, Santi Uruti has been threatening to grab that spot, though. Give credit as well to Andre Negrau, who has run in second and done so cleanly, allowing that battle for third to gap back behind him a bit. Yorutia and Kaiser, though, are absolutely Going at it here the last few laps. Hey, Jake, you're right. He's on him again here. And I think it's very important to note, Nick Yeoman, that we have to remember Santi Arrutia has been put on probation by race director Tony Cobb. And yeah, he would like to make a move by Kyle Kaiser here, but he's going to watch himself. Anything too aggressive could find himself with a potential 10-point penalty. Arrutia obviously that big slap on the wrist. He needs to be very smart here, Nick. He can't overshoot it. He can't make a mistake because the championship, of course, hangs in the balance. Ah, but Davey, at the same time, he's running just one spot ahead of Ed Jones, who 
Jones has just kind of been running his own race. He's about 12 seconds behind Urrutia for fourth and a good three and a half seconds ahead of Veach uh, for the fourth position, or for the fifth position, excuse me. Uh, and for Urrutia, as they run right now, second in points. So it's shaping up to be a pretty good day. But, man, I know as a race car driver, when you got someone right there in the sights like he has with Kyle Kaiser, it's tough to hold back. It is hard to hold back. He, he, he forgot he's on probation. He, when you're in the car, you do know in the back of your mind, by the other side of the coin, you're out there to race, and you're going to do what you feel is right and just hope for the best, but uh, he, he definitely wants to get by Kaiser. It is a points chase, and he knows that he's ahead of Jones, but not enough to really gain a lot of points. I mean, Jones is still 24 ahead of him as, as of right now. And Paul Small, you have more on Santi Arutia, the fourth place running machine. Schmidt Peterson crew watching and uh, not much conversation or anything. They're just focused on uh, one of the giant screens here as they continue to watch Santiago Arutia as he tries to catch up there and move into that third spot. And it seems like the one spot on the track where he's losing time is coming out of one and into two where the front end of that car is dancing a little bit. There's been some communication back and forth between the driver and crew on that. R.C. Anderson, you've been watching the timing and scoring, kind of monitoring these drivers uh, as the lap times uh, pick up and lay down. And uh, Felix Sorales, has he grabbed that fastest lap of the race so far? Yeah, I mean, he looks like he looks quick. He got past DeMello, and, I mean, he's, he's just turned the quickest lap of the race. You'll see, I bet you they radio to Felix. Um, I bet you they radio to Rosenquist saying, hey, you lost the fastest lap. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to push a little bit harder at the end here. I mean, I bet he'll use his push to pass later in the race. He's saving it, sitting out front. And uh, I mean, these drivers always want to save him as much as they can, especially leading like that to, in case you get a restart or something, and he'll be all over that button at the end, trying to put down a quick lap. 12 laps to go, Felix Rosenquist, Andre Negrau, Kyle Kaiser, Santi Arutia, and Ed Jones. Rob Houghton, that's your top five as they run here at Toronto. You know, Nick, from my position here, watching these drivers come out of turn five and heading over to turn number six, it's interesting to see how far they go close to the wall on the exit of the corner. There's drivers here that are pushing very hard. Felix Sorales, one of them, obviously getting himself quite close to the wall on the exit of that corner. In fact, a little bit of exit oversteer. Other drivers like Ed Jones, who are a little more conservative, in fact, probably about six to seven feet away from the wall. Obviously, Ed Jones in a pretty solid position right now. He knows that his championship challengers have had issues. Dean Stoneman, of course, he knows that Santi Arutia just in front of him right now. He knows that Rosenquist not really in the title hunt. So Jones running some very conservative exit lines out of turn number five. Rob Houghton, this is also a uh, full Mazda Road to Indy weekend. Uh, the Pro Mazda USF 2000 drivers, they've been on the racetrack quite a bit this weekend. Update us uh, with who has been able to pick up victory so far this yeah, weekend. We had a fantastic day today, of course. We kicked off things here at the uh, Toronto Indy with a big victory for the Canadian driver Parker Thompson in that USF 2000 series. He was absolutely over the moon uh, that he was able to score the victory there. An impressive run for Parker Thompson. And then again, Aaron Tielitz, guys, has kind of stepped things up in Pro Mazda. Pato Award, the T. Pelfrey driver, his teammate, uh, won six of the first seven races of the year. But right now, Aaron Tielitz is on a tear. He's won four straight races. And Nick Yeoman, they have tied up the points, 297 points for both both Keelitz and Pato Award. Pro Mazda blown wide open with just those five more races to go. Two races in Mid-Ohio, and now a triple header at the Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca. After they cancel the race at Iowa, it'll be a triple header to decide the cram when we head to Monterey. Gosh, Rob, that is going to be fascinating because I, I remember, you know, a handful of months ago, we thought, boy, Pato Award's going to walk away with that Pro Mazda championship. Uh, but uh, Tielitz is a guy that's kind of unstoppable right now. You only have to flash back to 2013, Nick, when Matthew Brabham just dominated the season, and that's what we were looking at. We were watching Pato. Hey, can he get this record? Can he eclipse the record of Matthew Brabham? And that was really just a month ago. And now we find ourselves with uh, a totally different situation. Of course, Tielitz winning at his home state, uh, Wisconsin. Road America swept the weekend there, sweeps the weekend here. And now we go to Mid-Ohio in two weeks with a totally different storyline. Pro Mods is going to be a lot of fun to watch. It's going to be fun in USF 2000 as well. Parker Thompson with the lead, but his teammates, of course, Anthony Martin right there, ready to, to pounce as well, less than 15 points back. And again, Rob, for those that are here in Toronto that may not follow the Mazda Road to Indy as closely as we do, this is all, it's a developmental program, an opportunity for some of these drivers that whether they're in carts or whether they get to the USF 2000, everyone's got a chance to eventually get to the Indianapolis 500 and the IndyCar Series yeah, uh, with an opportunity series. to win championships. Sorry, Nick, of course, there is a reason why this is the kind of the model ladder system in the world. It's a direct line all the way to the Verizon IndyCar Series. Young kart racers get themselves into one of the schools. They come into USF 2000. They go to Pro Mazda. 
and of course they go to Indy Lights before winning that scholarship and moving into the Verizon IndyCar Series, and that really is the beauty of it, Nick. We've talked about it so many times. It's the scholarship that Mazda puts up. You win USF 2000, you get the scholarship to run Pro Mazda the next year. If you win Pro Mazda, it's worth $750,000 for that driver to transition into Indy Lights in 2017. And you know, we saw it with Spencer Pickett. He won the championship last year in Indy Lights, and he got a chance to run three races, including the 100th running of the Indianapolis 500. To win that Indy Lights series puts you with the big boys the following year, and nowhere else in the world do you have something like that. Mazda, Cooper Tire, Anderson Promotions, they put together something that's absolutely the model of what we have in motorsports. Appreciate that, Rob Howden. I know you are uh, certainly the insider there for the Mazda Road to Indy, the voice of, uh, of the Mazda Road to Indy as well, as well, calling all those USF 2000 and Pro Mazda races. Jake Query, yesterday, Zachary Clayman DeMello ended up in that turn three runoff area with a torn up race car as an innocent bystander in a big wreck. Looks like he's uh, made it to a familiar spot down there with you again today. It's a highlight each and every weekend to be able to come across and make acquaintance with the Homatro safety crew guys. They're as nice a group of guys as you are going to find and as professional as one can find. The only people who don't like seeing them, race car drivers, and that includes Zach Clayman, who gets out of his car now. It is the second time, as you mentioned, that Safety Team 3 has had to tend to him this weekend and as many days. This time, I think something just went wrong with that front right of the car. Instead of turning, he did the sportsman-like thing, went ahead and went in through the runoff area, got out of his competitor's way. They then pulled him off around through the fencing here, and he has gotten out of that machine. So uh, for Zachary Clayman de Mello, it appears that this day is going to end with a 13th place finish. Uh, that's one spot better than Dean Stoneman as uh, Davey as the, the laps wind down with seven to go. Uh, not much for that Andretti Autosport crew to gain at this point. Yeah, at this point, I mean, I mean, he's just sitting in the pits. I, I don't know if they've given up yet or not or if they're still trying to get fast slap, but not looking too promising at this point at all. And uh, we've got a handful of uh, pit reporters down on pit lane. Jim Murphy's been watching that story, and, uh, and certainly it does not appear that uh, Dean Stoneman's going to get to go back out of the racetrack. Seven to go. Felix Rosenquist has led all 38 laps. The gap is now at 8.7 seconds. Every lap he's been adding three-tenths here, a half a second there, and uh, thus has put together a commanding 8.7 second lead. Andre Negrau runs second, Kyle Kaiser is third, Santi Uruti is fourth, and RC, those three have really been separated by four or five car lengths this entire race. Yeah, I mean, you really burn off the front tires when you're behind people and in traffic. It's it's really difficult being in that turbulent air and at all the time, and as soon as you give it in that clean air, it feels amazing. You push harder, but these guys are really pushing to try and get there. Rosenquist already into turn number one as second, third, and fourth. Roar out of turn number 11. Again, Negrau, Kaiser, and Yeruti have been slugging it out. Uh, only once has Yeruti been able to really get alongside Kaiser. Kaiser has not really been fast enough, though, to challenge Andre Negrau as Rosenquist makes his way through turn number three. Jake Query, second, third, and fourth. Head to you in turn three. Yeah, Rosenquist is really on a flyer here. He has that entire straightaway advantage. Just now beneath me, you can hear Andre Negrau. Negrau. Now, Kyle Kaiser is right there, but as Negrau holds up Kaiser, Yerutia seems ready to pounce, Rob. Yeah, Jake, right on top once again. On the throttle, coming out of, over top of the concrete in turn number five. It's about a car length and a half, Nick Yeoman. You can see Satya Rutia, he's not done yet, continues to push here on Kaiser. And you've got to say, second, third, and fourth, those drivers have not given up the entire race distance. No, and one of the things that I've noticed uh, in the short time watching Satya Rutia here at Indy Lights, Davey, is he's a guy that will search around the racetrack and find some different ways to enter corners, exit corners, and uh, run it in fourth. You can see second, third, they're right there in front of him. Well, and that's the key. You need to find your strengths and their weaknesses. And to do that, sometimes the advantage of being in the back of a little pack like that is you could play around a little bit. You could see, you know, what, what the outside lines are going to do, what breaking points are going to do, and then just try to really focus on their weakness, the, the guy in front of your weaknesses, and try to take advantage of it. They're going to race off of turn at number two. Yeruti about two to three car lengths behind Jake Query. Is he close enough to make a pass there? Rutia is going to try to look to the inside, but again, Kaiser keeps that middle line. Yorutia has to then try to the outside. Still can't make the move, is Santi Yorutia. He's closed up, though, Jay Query now within a half a car length as they work their way coming through a turn number five here. Here in trouble in turn number eight for Dalton Kellett. Uh, Nick Yeoman, he was getting pressure big time by Alberico last time by me here in turn five. Yeah, certainly Alberico and Kellett were battling for the eighth position, and Dalton Kellett has buried the front tires, certainly the left front tire and the front wing into 
the tire barrier of turn number eight. And uh, not sure if we're going to get a full course caution or not. He's not able, Davey, to pull that car out of the tires. And that's a pretty precarious spot there because turn eight's caught a lot of guys out. A lot of guys out. And he tried to back up right there. They do have reverse. It's, oh, he is backing up right now. It looks like he's left his nose wing there. But uh, but looks like he's going to be able to get going again. Veach just went by. And by the way, uh, is that right front tire? I can't tell if that stuff wrapped around it. Yeah, it is. I think he's going to be all right to go ahead. There he goes. That's great, and especially for... Rosenquist, I mean, this guy had a seven-second lead, basically. He's into lap traffic right now, getting by the, the lappers. Nice lead that he's got, and, uh, and unfortunately, I got a little uh, note from my buddy, John Bruner, who's team manager. You know, one thing with this Blardy team, they've worked hard to put these cars together, and if you notice, both cars, they don't have sponsorships on the side of them, right? right. I mean, that's one thing that this series really needs to fight for, and, and Brian Blardy and, and John Bruner have, obviously, they're going to look to be a sweep this weekend. Um, the most beautiful cars out there, Penske style, and uh, right now they're 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 looking for funding to keep these cars on the track, and they show they got the performance. So let's just hope that this win from uh, from, from Felix could uh, could help them out. Paul Small, it's been a frustrating weekend for Dalton Kellett as he's made his way to pit lane. Ooh. They were able to change the wing on that car, and he also picked up a little souvenir. He uh, gleaned one of the uh, banners that was over there by the uh, tires in turn eight and carried that with him into the pits. That debris is clear as well. Boy, it is go time for the battle for third as Santi Arutia all over the rear wing. Kyle Kaiser had to hang that car out at the exit of turn number 11. Here they come, Jake Query. It's a battle for third. And once again, Kaiser get a hug it to the inside line out of two. Urrutia tries to swing wide into three. Kaiser again keeps that car low, holds off that 55 machine. Coming through turn number four, Jake Quarry all over him right now. Look at this, Santi Urrutia right up under the rear wing of Kyle Kaiser. All on the throttle, little tail happy coming out of the corner. Wider entry, guys, into turn number six. He rolls on the back shoot, trying to set up Kaiser for a run into turn number eight. And RC, you can physically see with the way that number 55 is moving around the racetrack, uh, Santi tired of waiting to get that final spot on the podium. Oh man, he's super anxious and to bring a Schmidt-Peterson uh, second and third podium would be awesome and he's pushing as hard as he can right now trying to figure out where the best spot to get Kyle would be at and it looks like he's trying to pounce as anywhere he can. As they'll race their way off of turn number 11, Felix Rosenquist has already crossed the start finish line with two to go. He's extended his lead to 7.8 seconds. This third place battle is heated up and it's allowed Andre Negrau to chase away to a three second gap back to third, but everyone has their eyes on Kaiser and Urrutia. They race down the back straightaway. Jake, if Santi Urrutia is gonna get him in turn three, he's only got two more opportunities. Second verse here, same same thing through, and same verse as the last. Urrutia tries to go to the outside, can't do it. Kaiser, Rob, very consistent with that line, holding off Urrutia. Yeah, Kaiser not doing any kind of block and line, Jake, here to turn number five. A little bit tighter going into turn number six. And again, Urrutia trying to get that run to the outside. Car doesn't seem to want to turn in that well to turn number six, though. Kind of pushes out a little bit wide, but again, Kaiser running a pretty solid line here, holding back the driver from Uruguay. And those two will go flying around the outside of the number two for Team Pelfrey of Juan Pedro Hita. He's come to a stop there on the uh, south end of the racetrack. Felix Rosenquist, though, will see the white flag. The gap was nearly seven to eight seconds there. We'll keep our eye on, our, on that battle for third. Kaiser's got about a four to five car length advantage. But for Felix Rosenquist, Jake, down the back straightaway, headed to turn three, looking for a sweep here in Toronto. What a tremendous outing today for Felix, Ro Felix Rosenquist. He works his way, swings it wide in through turn number three. That battle behind him is for naught in Rosenquist's eyes, Rob. This guy's been on a flyer all day trying to go two for two. Talk about laying down a beating. This guy has been absolutely unbelievable. Of course, he won at the very start of the year, remember, at St. Petersburg. He's a multi-time winner at Macau, as you said. And man, what a fantastic run for Rosenquist. Watching Kaiser right now come through with Arutia. No challenge here right now for the third position, Nick Yeoman. He's been pushing hard, Santi, but just not quite enough today for Kyle Kaiser. Yeah, Kaiser may be able to hold on to that third spot for over Santi Arutia. Andre Negrau appears poised to grab the second position, but here comes our leader through turn number 11. He's going to be the first driver this season to win three races. Felix Rosenquist sweeps the weekend. He'll see the twin checkered flags. He'll go to victory lane in back-to-back -back days here on the streets of Toronto. Brian Bellardi's organization, they pick up their fourth win of the season, and again, the third for Felix Rosenquist.
King of the streets. It's a nickname that can only be given to drivers who excel on the street circuits in their sport, and that is what Felix Rosenquist has done this season. One win at St. Petersburg in the streets and two wins here in Toronto. Why are you so good at these tracks? I don't know. I think, first of all, the car is fantastic to drive. Uh, Bellardi has just made a fantastic setup for these circuits. That's the first thing, and then I think it's just my favorite kind of circuits, these street circuits. Uh, I just find myself at home, and uh, yeah, I can just push push harder and harder every lap. And this last race, I just had so much confidence from the previous races. I knew exactly what to do, and I could manage everything. And that's just one of those races, you know, where you don't have them that often, but you have to enjoy them while you have them. You came into this weekend not in the championship top three, but with Dean Stoneman having big troubles and your back-to-back -back wins, this shakes up the championship standings big time. What do you got to do to get to Mazda Raceway and stand on top? Well, I think that's going to be tough. I mean, uh, it's not sure yet if I will do the remaining races, but uh, obviously we, did, we made a huge chunk this weekend. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, we just have to see what happens from next week's. Felix Rosenquist, King of the Streets in 2016 here in Indy Lights. Congratulations. Thank you.